Just get in. Hey, I had 45 cents here. Now there's only 30. Okay, where do I file a complaint? Now, look, young lady, nobody stole 15 cents from you. Now, ever been arrested before? Don't try to change the subject. Just where do I file a complaint? Okay, I'll ask Lieutenant Manners to come. Do. Lieutenant, uh, we have a young prisoner out here who claims she's been robbed of 15 cents since she's been in custody. Fire the windows. I'll be right there. How many times have you been arrested? The name Judy Harper's never been on a police blotter anywhere. I'm Lieutenant Manners, young lady. You've been the victim of a larceny? Oh, uh, yeah. Lieutenant, she says her name is Judy uh, Harper, and her age is uh, 18 and a half. What was the year of your birth? You know, I also had a very valuable compact here. Do you think it's possible, Judy, that you say you're over 18 just to avoid going to a uh, juvenile hall? And how about you're innocent until proven guilty? Prove I'm not over 18. Run a complete ID on it, Jerry. Here's 15 cents, Judy. Buy yourself a lollipop. And my compact? I'd give you mine, but I left it home today. <laughs> Birth anywhere we've been able to find. No memory of her parents, she says. Her life seems to begin age of seven. Dr. Sharp says she could be anywhere from 16 to 18, maybe even 18 and a half, like she says. Our missing persons now. Blue eyes, brown hair. Disappeared at age six, would be 16 now. Light frame. Initials, J.H. Checks pretty good, huh? Yeah. One last thing, blood type. Not a real rare blood type, but pretty rare. Type AB negative. You mean both have AB negative? Both. Jennifer Heaton. You remember the case? Sure I do. Rich people out at the seashore. <laughs> really pretty darn rich. And I gave her 15 cents. <laughs> Any fingerprints on a Heaton child? They got some off toy she'd handled, but smudged and indistinct. It'd be funny, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Funny and kind of nice. <laughs>
Oh, Mrs. Heaton? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Manners. Come in. I'm the one who spoke to you on the telephone. This is policewoman Elizabeth Wright. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? And this young lady. Hello. Hello. Look familiar? Uh-uh. No, ma'am. Not at all? Listen, the only time I was ever in a room this big, that I remember, they, they showed a movie in it. Everything's the way it was, almost exactly the way it was. Uh, let's sit down and just talk for a few minutes. Jennifer knew her name. My daughter Jennifer had had a, a year and a half preschool. She knew how to write her name. Yes, ma'am. But the shock could have... Write your name. resemblance. Not at all. Are you a handwriting expert, Mrs. Heaton? She is not my child, Lieutenant. The sooner we recognize it, the better. Easier for all of us. I'm sorry, dear, you are not Jennifer. Look, I never said I was. The cops are the ones all having the heart attacks about it. Me? My name's Judy Harper. We're still getting material on this young lady. But from what we have so far, the first record is Eugene, Oregon, almost a year after your daughter disappeared. She was with a family of itinerant farm workers. They found her in a field, crying, alone, didn't know her age, took her two days before she'd tell her name. And then she said it was Judy Hadley. The only thing that makes you think she might be mine are the initials, the blood type, the eye color. Jennifer's hands were entirely different. Uh, a different uh, make of person. <laughs> Peasant type hands. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, maybe Judy and Mrs. Heaton should be left together for a while. She's not my daughter. Hmm. I am Judy Harper. H-A-R-P-E-R. -E yes, I remember the Heaton child's disappearance. Go on. Mrs. Heaton was very certain that this wasn't her child. Positive. Yeah? Too positive, too quick. I don't get your meaning, boy. It interested me uh, why a mother would act like that. I asked research to get me the whole file on the disappearance, including the newspaper comment about the case and about the Heatons. This was the only baby she had. She was uh, somewhere in her 40s when the kid was born. You'd think it'd be a much-loved kid, wouldn't you? Right? Well, sure, right. Well, uh, this was in the papers about a year before the little girl, Jennifer Heaton, disappeared. Was, um, was she convicted of mistreating the child? Never came to trial. Her lawyer proved that she was in an overwrought state. Seems her husband was dying at the time. I see the direction your mind is going. The officers investigating the Heaton girl's disappearance must have had the same idea. They tried to search the 11 acres of land that Mrs. Heaton has out there, started turning up the soil, but uh, she got a court order to make them desist. They desisted. What do you want to do? Force a trial visit on Mrs. Heaton. Try to get her to take Judy for a few days. If Judy is Jennifer, they might find it out. 
But if Mrs. Heaton murdered her own child, having this kid around, well, something like that could make a woman uncork. Chief Austin himself, and I saw the fingerprints. Jennifer's blown up at the same size as this girl's. This Judy Hopper, she calls herself. They're the same, Sharon. They're absolutely the same. You're certain? Well, even I could see that the fingerprints were almost identical. a daughter. You're practically a doctor delivering me. <laughs> I guess that's one way of looking at it. A daughter. Well, I try anything once. <laughs> Hello. It's going to be hard to call you Jennifer. Do I call you Mother? Why shouldn't you? Uh, well, I don't really believe it. Fingerprints don't lie, do they? I don't know why not. Everything else does. Come on. Did you have dinner? Yes, ma'am. Maybe you should call me Charlotte. I'll call you Judy <clears throat> for a while. Uh, that's a relief. Ma'am's what you call the matrons, places I've been. Well, juvenile asylums, hmm? Yeah, that's right. You have your own room, the old one. Uh, do you remember where it is? What? Oh, my lawyer, Mr. Nelson. Uh, Mark, this is, uh, this may very well be my daughter. Hello. I brought in some of your old toys. Thought they might make you remember. Never saw the character before in my life. Cheerful slob. <laughs> Smiley. <laughs> That's what Jennifer called her. <laughs> Anybody would. Yes. What is it? Familiar? Oh, kid, I knew had one like it. Was the kid you? No. No, I don't think so. Why don't you want to be my daughter? Why? Well, I... You really don't, do you? The head shrink is every place I've been. Tell me I'm self-destructive. Pow! 
I'm self-destructive. What was the color of your room? Well, I'd be a sucker not to say pink, wouldn't I? Was it pink? Well, I... What is it? In that room upstairs... Is there a mother goose bedspread? Let's go look at it. Charlotte. What is the bedspread? A bed. Flowered. Oh, yes. But I seem to remember something. Mark, no. a year or so. From orphanages and asylums. Yeah, them things and rice pudding. Those things. Yes, ma'am. Boy. What? Boy, what a lucky kid. It wasn't me, believe me. I'd have remembered if I'd ever had a pad like this all to myself. Well, it ain't Mother Goose, is it? Oh, you were the ocean? I never been here. I ain't Jennifer. I'm sorry, I just ain't. Have you any idea how much I wish you were? Could be? Hey, look at the moonlight on the ocean. Let's go back down. I'll make us some cocoa. Hey, you know what I would like is a beer. Have you got any? I have not. Hey, you know, if I'm not Jennifer 16, then I'm Judy 18. And Judy 18's allowed beer. Now I lay me down to sleep. And pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die, before I wake, I... I pray the Lord my soul to take. Bless Mama, bless Papa, and bless... Bless what? You! This room! The whole thing! So creepy, it's getting on my nerves. Hey, how come you never look out the windows? The drapes are always closed downstairs. You're very acute, aren't you? Bless Mama. Bless Papa. And bless Egbert. That's what I was going to say. Did they say that at some orphanage? Oh, they used to have us bless the governor. Oh, and the state legislature. The police told you, of course, that when Jennifer disappeared, her little toy dog, Egbert. She had Egbert with her. They might have, I don't remember. Do you lie easily, Judy? At the drop of a hat. Jennifer didn't. At least she didn't when she left here.
John Manners. Listen, I am not Jennifer Heaton. I gave it thought. Look, this place is creepy. I mean, we oh, yeah, are the old girl's nice enough, but uh, creepy, you know? Listen, you come out here and you get me this morning. Please. Look, you made a mistake. Fresh orange juice. We're going to cure that little sniffle. What little sniffle? You have one. I heard it during the night. I believe in vitamin C. I believe in God and prayer and uh, <laughs> vitamin C. Do you know what I want to do if you'll join me? If you will. Let's uh, play that you're Jennifer. Let's just assume that you are. What was your first memory? Your very first. I know mine. I must have been about four and a half or five. We lived down the sea in a house somewhat like this. I remember the seagulls. So beautiful against a blue sky. Tell me, what was your first memory? Being burned by a cigarette. What? My juvenile home. Oh, they had a matron there. <laughs> that was the punishment she handed out. The worse thing you did, the more the burns. I was a three holer once. Oh, God. Oh, well, I heard they caught her at it. Gave her five to ten for child beating. Oh, my poor darling. My poor darling. I hate anybody who'd beat a child, don't you? Of course. Of course I do. That woman must be sick. <laughs> oh, she was sick, all right. I just wish I'd get put in some can with her someday. I'd make her so much sicker. Jennifer, don't hate. That's all behind you. Hey, you know, I'm going to call that cop lieutenant to have him come up here and get me. I'm Judy. Not Jennifer. I'm sorry. Hey, how about some coffee? Come on. I've been too all over you. I, I'll stop, I, I promise. But you are my daughter. This is your home. The kitchen belongs to you. You know, the truth is I already called the lieutenant. While you were out here squeezing all the 2,000 oranges. Oh, Jennifer. Cream and sugar? Call him back and tell him not to come. Jennifer, I... Personally, I take mine black. <clears throat> You're a minor. You have to stay here. And you shouldn't drink coffee that strong at your age. Look, I ain't Jennifer, and I ain't a juvenile. Boy, if there's one thing I don't want to ever be no more, and that's a juvenile. You know, that's going fourth class mass. It ain't even tourist. You know, a gorilla in a cage has got more civil rights than a, a juvenile. But as my daughter, you come into quite a lot of money. Of course, it isn't a fortune, but it's more than you're likely to get. Breaking and entering, whatever you did. Money's money, and I do a lot for money. But not some things. Such as what? What crime have I asked you to commit? Look, to put it as clean as I can, I won't pretend to feel something that I don't feel. But I haven't asked you to love me, Judy. If that's what you want me to call you. I just want you to let me love you. Oh, it's the same thing. Mm. 
Look, you made a mistake. I mean, lousy one at that. She's nothing bad. Me? I ought to get my teeth knocked in for what I'm doing. So, all right. So you give me 30 days for breaking and entering. You were in Nevada about four months ago, hmm? Is that a question? That is a statement, young lady. You were in Vegas four months ago, and there was another breaking and entering a house. Yeah, well, I needed a place to flop. So what? Only this time. There were several hundred dollars worth of, uh... uh let's see. The radio, TV, sewing machine. What did you have, a truck? Oh, you lousy cop. I was 12 hours out of town when they took that stuff. Oh, and you know it. You're using that as muscle on me. Muscle or not, you're wanted in Nevada to stand trial for burglary, and I've got to send you back. Uh-uh. Unless... Unless... Unless there are overriding matters here. Aiding the police might be an overriding matter. Oh. What we're involved in is possible murder. The murder of a child. It's called infanticide in the books. Now, if you're not Jennifer... Look, she never killed anybody. Do you stay? Do you work for us? I uh, hear they got slot machines in the jails in Nevada. Might not be so bad. Grand larceny, Judy. Five years? Why take a chance? What is it made of? It's just cashmere, miss. It feels like mink looks. My daughter would, would like to try it on. Yes, ma'am. How much is it? You don't have to worry about that, dear. I'm used to worrying about that. Thank you. How much? $44 plus tax. Oh, well, who needs it? Jennifer, please, let me buy it for you. Thank you, we'll take it. Jennifer, would you mind? Oh, sure. <laughs> it's probably one of the matrons gonna bust us for, uh... Mm. <laughs> the light's on after 9 p.m. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> uh. oh, Judy. Mrs. Eaton here. Sure, she's right inside. Charlotte? Why, Mark, is there anything the matter? No, just a few small routine matters. I only have a minute. Charlotte, come out to the kitchen and get me a glass of water. I'm thirsty. Oh, I'll get it. No, no, Charlotte. Well, I think it's only fair to warn you. I'll look at your hand. I cheat. Don't you dare. Jennifer's fingerprints. I got to thinking. I thought maybe it would be wise to have an independent expert compare Jennifer's with this girl's. Now, Charlotte, this was a perfectly proper request. But the police have done everything they can to stall. I've never seen such stalling. I don't understand. 
I tried it again this evening. I saw Chief Austin and the district attorney personally. It's no luck. Charlotte, they're up to something. I'm not going to lose her again. I don't care what you say. I'm not going to lose Jennifer again. I think they're using her to...
Dirty Sergeant. Yes, I understand. Tell him. Tell him he was right. Tell him I know where the body's buried. a young girl's soul. Dear Jesus, meek and mild. Take her immortal spirit to thyself. Charlotte? I'm sure that you did it in anger. Oh, temporary insanity. Good lawyer could get you off. What? Well, a woman like you. Uh, I've never known anyone as kind as you. For you to kill a little kid. Your own kid. Well, it was temporary insanity. 
You think I killed Jennifer? Shh, shh. Don't say anything more. I'm going to call that lawyer of yours, Mr. Nelson. You think I killed my daughter? Well, the cops do. Didn't you? Of course I didn't. <sighs> then who did? <sighs> my husband was in great pain before he died. Suspended between the indignity of pain and the indecency of drugs. He loved Jennifer. He adored her. But several times he... Beat her? I see. Police showed me the clippings. He did it. One day I came home and he told me that he hit Jennifer and she ran away. I, two days later, I found a place out where you saw me. A place where the ground was soft, as if I tried to rouse the courage to ask him, but the following day, he, he was dead. I never had the courage to look to see if, whether Jennifer was there or not. You could be Jennifer. You don't know who your parents oh, are. Oh, yes, I do, honey. I pretend I don't, but I do. I know it's so good it makes my stomach turn over. Old Ma with her wrinkled old face and mean disposition. Hooper's our name. I got two sisters. They look just like me. Jennifer, I'm not. Oh, well, you'd know if you saw us all standing together. I see. Listen, I'd better get you upstairs and into bed. Why don't you stay anyway? I could, I could legally adopt you. All of this... Charlotte, honey, it's too late for me to be your sweet little daughter. I just can't live the way you do. What do you mean? Charlie, you know, I started way below the bottom. Below the cesspool, you might say. When you started where I did, anything that happens to you in life is a step up. Your things seem kind of funny, you know. You now, you live serious, scared all the time, tight. <laughs> Who needs that? The whole world doesn't frighten you. One small square of ground terrifies me. You know, I left a message for that lieutenant. He'll probably be here early. They could send me back to Nevada. I really better hit the road. Judy. No, no, really, I've got to. I'll be here for you. Whenever. Oh, sure, I'll be back. I probably will be back. Meanwhile, I need some cash. Could you stake me about five bucks? Of course. Ten? You know, I, I think I'll take the train. I've never been on a train. Nothing there. Nothing. And all these years, I... I've been afraid to. Am I... 
I thought that my poor husband... Judy tells me that you thought I'd done it. And I thought that he... Oh. I'm suddenly... Uh, I'm suddenly very tired. What you just said, the way you said it, it's as though Judy isn't here anymore. Well, does it sound that way? Yes, it does. Where is Judy, Mrs. Heaton? You know that there's a charge that she has to stand trial for in Nevada. Is there really? Sam, I don't think Judy's here the way she's talking. Mrs. Heaton, is that true? That's true. Well, where is she? Uh, there's some coffee on if you want some. Mrs. Heaton, where is Judy? The shovel's out there. Why don't you dig? Now, what's got in there? You want to search the house? I've got a John Doe warrant in the car we can use. I don't know. I... Let's go back and look for criminals. And then on days like that, we'd go to the stores together and take turns. My brothers and sisters and I. Do you have brothers and sisters? Me? No, none. Only child, huh? I don't know. I'm an orphan. If you're an orphan, how do you know what your name is? I don't. Who was the name of the first orphanage I was in? The name of the street it was on. The corner of Hooper and Harper. <laughs> 